This time in this camera comparison, I'm pitting the uh, Xiaomi 13 Pro up against the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So with the iPhone front-facing camera right now, of course, it can shoot 4K 30 and 4K 60. Now with the Xiaomi, we just get 1080p. And both of them are using right now electronic image stabilization. So if I jog it here, just to test out how steady it really is, the front-facing camera on both of these, which do you think is the steadiest? Now the audio sources I am swapping over. So I'm gonna go from the iPhone back to the Xiaomi so we can hear which one has the best microphones and the best audio quality. 4K 30 with our rear cameras here. So the main sensors, 48 megapixels versus 50, the one inch sensor with the Xiaomi 13 Pro. And the focus on both of them, I have not really seen any issues. It seems to be rock solid. And that's what you want, of course. You don't want any issues. So the audio, as I told you before at the start, I'm swapping over the sources. And which one do you think is the best? The iPhone or the Xiaomi here? Just pan around. So there should be no jitter coming through at all. And I'm just gonna sprint ahead now. Testing out, of course, the optical and electronic image stabilization. Which do you think is the steadiest here? Still keeping with 4K 30 frames per second, but now the ultra wide cameras. So there's a difference here in the megapixel count, 50 versus the 12 megapixels. Not that it really matters. It's more on the size of those pixels. Sometimes the lower pixel count is better. So as I pan around here with the exposure change, if we are going to see any issues with Panning jutter, it would be probably now coming through. I have noticed from experience that normally the iPhone is a little bit better in this area. So there is no optical image stabilization. It's all electronic here. I'm just going to jog down the stairs. Test out and see which has the best electronic image stabilization with 4K 30 and the ultra wide cameras. So focus on both of them. Good, no problems. You can see even in these conditions, a bit overcast at the moment, that uh, if you've got your hand, well, my hand here in the front, where it should be focusing, doesn't seem to be an issue. And what I'll do now is a sprint test, just to test out that optical and electronic image stabilization again. So it does look to me like the jarring's coming through less on the iPhone 14 Pro Max when I run along and you can see that coming through more with the Xiaomi 13 Pro and a few fluctuations in the exposure too. Zoom cameras now, so 3.2 times optical with the Xiaomi 13 Pro and three times optical with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now I'm holding this as still as possible in my little mount here, pointing at this little house that looks like it is, well, close to falling off this cliff here. It's probably gonna happen one day, so just walking ahead now to test out the stability and it looks like right here it is the Xiaomi 13 Pro that seems to be the steadiest if you plan to shoot zoom video and walk a little bit. Now I'm not trying to jump around or anything like that, that was me trying to be as steady as possible really there. You can see there is a bit of difference, at least when I'm looking at the screens right now recording this. Over to low light video now, so struggling these little tiny sensors here to capture me correctly. Image stabilization does not look anywhere near as good now. You can see the jarring coming through as I walk, and it's looking quite a bit grainy on both of them with a bit of noise here. Is that larger sensor going to help out here with the Xiaomi 13 Pro because it's a one inch sensor versus the 48 megapixel sensor, which is quite a bit smaller. Now I can see the iPhone has a little bit more lens flare, but it's still happening. You can see what looks like UFOs in the sky. You can see, oh, look at those UFOs. Back and forth there. Definitely worse on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but yeah, you can still see it. It's still present with the Xiaomi there, which is a bit of an annoyance there. So focus on both in low light. It seems to be good. I haven't really seen any issues so far in my time testing it out. Just face over this area here because this is quite a bit darker. These boats aren't really lit up by any lights directly, apart from some of them have oh, little blue lights down here. But yeah, not wonderful on both of these phones here for low light video. Ultra wide cameras, so this is 4K 30. And Apple always do rant on about how their iPhone Ultra wides are the best at low light video. And well, it's looking like it definitely is 
making this comparison quite easy for me to choose a winner here because it is capturing more on the iPhone versus the Xiaomi. So stabilization, just walk ahead. Of course, it's all electronic with the ultra wide. And let's now jump into our still shots. So this one here of my daughter portrait mode. I don't like the iPhone 14 Pro Max's warmness. It's always the same, portrait photos too warm. Now the Xiaomi 13, I think the 13 Pro here, the stitching is not as good as the iPhone, but I do like the background blur. That's one thing I do like about it. But all up, picking a winner here. I think the more pleasant portrait photo is the iPhone here. With selfie portraits, it's basically the same story. The iPhone is a little too warm. Now, again, I like the background blur here from the Xiaomi. Depth of field looks a little better, but I don't like the skin smoothing with the Xiaomi. It kind of ruins the photo. Now, I did turn off all the beautifying options, but it still smoothed my skin. And with the iPhone, you get all of the skin imperfections do show up. So wrinkles, lines, spots, it's all there. With this photo, both of them look almost identical. It's only when you crop in, you can see that the bright yellow is captured better with the iPhone and there's a bit of clipping going on with the colors with the Xiaomi. So that's why the iPhone in this photo is, for me, gonna get the win here. Macro photo here now. So the iPhone uses its ultra wide and then it focuses with the autofocus to give us these detailed macro shots. What I don't particularly like about it is the depth of field here. There's not that much blur with what's going on in the background. It makes the shot look a little busy. Whereas with the Xiaomi here, with the super macro mode enabled, again, it's the autofocus and with the ultra wide, it blurs the background out a lot better. It just has a, a better overall look to it. Captures quite a lot of detail too on those leaves. But what is captured better is the colors with the iPhone, the different shades there of the flower coming through a little better, but for me overall, because of the background blur and just having that subject kind of pop out at the screen more, is the Xiaomi. Zoom cameras now, so there is a difference in the optical zoom, but not much at all. So 3.2 times with the Xiaomi versus three times with the iPhone. Now here, I prefer the iPhone shot. The reason why is it just seems a little sharper, a little more detailed and the Xiaomi is a little bit on the soft side compared to the iPhone here. One more zoom shot. So this again is the maximum optical zoom. And you'll notice that the iPhone is a little sharper. Now they've just tweaked up the sharpness and some might say actually it's over sharpened because if you look at some of the white parts of those boats, you can see a little bit of noise, but I still think it's just a little bit better then the Xiaomi photo, take a look at the castle wall. You can see just more details coming through there. So that's why I give the zoom shot here, the edge and the win to the iPhone, but it's only just. Ultra wide cameras now. So the more correct colors are the colors that have been captured with the Xiaomi. I do like this photo, but when I crop in and start to look in detail at the iPhone 14 Pro ultra wide shot, you see a lot more different shades within those clouds, more details. And yes, you could say in a way, maybe it's a little bit over sharpened, but we still are gaining in those clouds just quite a few more details. So for me, it's the iPhone that pulls ahead with this shot. Then in this ultra wide shot, look at the sky. The Xiaomi has the blue sky more correct. It wasn't as saturated as the iPhone's showing it here. So the iPhone colors, uh, a little bit artificial with the sky, but the HDR here is better. Take a look at the details on those rocks there, the little stones, the pebbles, the shadows, definitely the edge and the wind goes for me to the iPhone. And back to the main cameras. So clearly you can see a difference in the brightness. The Xiaomi is a bit darker. The iPhone is quite a bit brighter. In fact, almost too bright. It did look in that moment when I took this photo, more like what the Xiaomi is showing us here. It has the more correct colors. The iPhone tends to be a little bit too over brightened, just artificially a little bit, a bit of sharpening going on. And it's more the white balance. The white balance is here correct with the Xiaomi. The shot of Vera here is in low light because it's indoors, the sun's gone down. Now take a look around Vera's left eye. You will see that with the Xiaomi, it's captured. You can just see her green eye. With the iPhone, it's a lot more difficult and there's a bit of blurriness to it. So the sharper photo, the better exposure, 
And the slightly brighter photo too is the Xiaomi. So for this low light shot indoors, the Xiaomi gets the win. Ooh, okay, so this one is looking very close. Now, at first glance, you'd say, hang on, they look really similar. But the white balance here, these lights have an orange tint to them, and the more correct white balance is coming through with the Xiaomi. Take a look at the C, especially with the iPhone. There is quite a bit of noise to the C. It just lost all those details there, where the Xiaomi's one-inch sensor actually retains those details. So for me, this win definitely goes to the Xiaomi. And then with this shot, the Xiaomi completely screwed up the white balance. It's far too cool. The iPhone here surprisingly got the white balance pretty much spot on. Again, those yellow, orangish tint kind of lights. So it should look warm, which it does. And overall, good details and everything. So for me, it's the iPhone photo. Then with this night shot, take a look at the Xiaomi. Just around the boat there, the handrail does look sharper. The blues come out correctly on both of them, and the white balance seems to be a little bit better on the Xiaomi, maybe slightly off with the iPhone. However, the iPhone on the right side of it, you can see it cap captures the ambient light a little better there, but for me, it's the Xiaomi that gets the overall win. So these are my findings. I think video quality, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna agree with me on this iPhone. It's got it, it's still the video champion. The only reason why I own an iPhone is for the video quality. The panning is so much smoother. There was judder with the Xiaomi. There was uh, a few issues with the focus with the ultra wide and the audio quality, however, with the iPhone was terrible at times, especially with the zoom camera and with the wind noise, the iPhone filters it where I just sounded completely muffled. No wind filtering with the Xiaomi, however, but yes, it's got the best audio quality. Now for daytime stills, for selfies, portraits, normal kind of shots, I think it was the iPhone there which was better. The edge, however, went to the Xiaomi when it came to low light photos. It would pull ahead with often sharper looking photos, less noise too as well. So that's one area at least where they are bettering them, which I kind of expect from a one inch sensor. So I do hope that with firmware updates, the Xiaomi can improve the video quality and just get rid of those annoying judders, but not holding my breath on that one. Thank you so much for watching this comparison here. If you did like it, please give a thumbs up. It helps out the algorithm so more people can see this video and subscribe for more.